This will likely be the first in a set of videos coming from a project that I have been working on. Like many hobbyists, I need to measure AC line voltage and a couple of loads. I started out trying to avoid doing anything complicated for power measurement, but I soon hit issues, and this simple approach became increasingly more complicated, less accurate, and less reliable. So it's time to reset that part of the project and evaluate a few approaches. There are several goals. First, monitor AC line voltage from 80 to 150 VAC RMS, checking for high and low voltage conditions, and a stretch goal of identifying short duration brownouts and voltage spikes the type caused by sudden switching of loads. To monitor AC current on two separate loads on the same AC circuit, or phase, uh, measuring instantaneous current from 0 to 10 amps with 0.5 amp accuracy, detecting low current and overcurrent conditions, and a stretch goal to identify surges uh, during load switching. And this will be installed outdoors in an IP67 enclosure, so I need to take into account uh, environmental temperature and be able to allow for handle a wide temperature range. Now I have some aversion to messing with AC line voltage and generally I work with little more than uh, TTL logic levels. So I opted for an isolated approach. That is AC line voltages are completely uh, separated from the microcontroller and other logic. This will allow me to have the sensing circuitry on a uh, separate board allowing me to uh, poke and prod the microcontroller without any shock hazard. So, what isolated current sensing approaches did I look at? The two that I ended up with are the traditional current transformer and the newer Hall effect sensors uh, like these. Current transformers work by having the current carrying wire pass through a magnetic core that also has a pickup coil on it this cable, this wire, induces a magnetic field in the core which is then picked up by this uh, other, other coil and feeds out a very, very small voltage to say a DMM or your ADC. The Hall effect sensor works similarly with power flowing through the solid state device itself with a tiny Hall effect sensor right up next to it. The uh, low voltage side is powered by 5 volts uh, TTL type level signal power and uh, outputs an analog uh, 0 to 5 volt signal uh, in proportion to the current flowing through it. Uh, this is what I finally uh, decided on was this ACS756 from Allegro and this is a simple uh, breakout board I made for it and closing it a little bit uh, to make it a little bit safer to work with at the bench with uh, AC voltage flowing through. So I initially tested this out using a heavy DC power supply and load and it worked fine. Uh, it was moderately accurate and very simple. Uh, then I tried it with AC and um, well let's take a look at those tests. So the first isolated current sense device we're going to look at is the ACS 756 from Allegro. And for the test we have it connected to a high current power supply fed down to a digital electronic load, down through a meter, and finally out to the device itself. The output of the ACS-756 is fed into an Arduino, which, and the D, uh, analog to digital converter output is then fed into the laptop, and we see the raw ADC output values right here. So let's see how, how well the uh, ACS 756 does. At zero amps we're reading getting a 502 or 503 kind of varies around there and that is because the ACS 756 has a quiescent voltage output of around it varies a bit but around 2.4 volts I found at uh, zero amps. So when we turn it on and ramp it up to about one amp the readings change to 510. If we ramp it up to 10 amps, the output from the ADC is about 578 to 580, so we're stabilizing on 579. Let's run the numbers through on that last test. The Arduino has a 10-bit ADC and at 5 volt power supply, 1023 steps, gives us 0 0.0049 volts per step. The ACS 756 <coughs> gives a null output of around something like three and a 
sorry, two and a half volts. However, on our uh, on ours, it came out to a count of 502, which is what matters here. When we gave it an input of one amp, the ACS 756 gave us a reading of, and the Arduino gave us a reading of 510. So we subtract out the 502 null value, giving us eight steps times our 0.0049 volts per step gives us a differential voltage measurement of 0.0392 volts. So the ACS 756 should be out giving an output of about 0.4, uh, oh, sorry, 0.04 volts or 40 millivolts per amp. So our 0.0392 divided by our 0.04 volts per amp gives us a 0.98 amp reading or an accuracy of 2%. When we ran uh, 10 amps through it, our count was 579 minus our null value give us 77 steps a differential of 0.377 volts working out to a reading of 9.43 amps or 5.7 percent error uh, my my goal for error was half an amp at max range so it'd be five percent so we're a little over what I needed now it looks like it's the the uh, ACS 756 that I have is not giving 40 millivolts per uh, amp output. In fact, it may be giving something a little closer to uh, uh, 39 or 38 millivolts instead of 40. Since my project is going to need to measure AC current and I'm not ready to go with live 110, we're going to go with a big 12 volt 20 amp transformer and we'll run that up through the ACS 756 and a meter, an AC RMS meter, to get uh, a reading and see how that compares to the Hall Effect sensor. Now I mentioned that the ACS 756 zero output voltage tended to drift a bit and here it is at the moment down at 470, a long ways from the 502 we had on the previous test. Let's fire up a load, in this case just a 12 volt DC lamp. It is pulling about 2.09, so close to 2.1, and our reading from the 756 off of the Arduino is all over the place. 500, 458, 462, 469, I mean really, what's going on with this? Well. Let's take a quick look at what's really happening. Let's look at the scope. On the scope, we now start to see what's really going on. Here's about the 2.5 volt or thereabouts um, neutral reading. And since the AC cycle is going positive here, it's getting a higher than 2.5 volt neutral reading. And here's where it's going negative. And the, since the current is reversing through the load, through the, through the Hall Effect sensor, it is then measuring a negative current. So that is what's going on. So how do I turn that into a reading for uh, my project? Hmm, maybe a level sensor, a peak detector. So here we've inserted a uh, peak detector in between the ACS 756 output and the input to the Arduino's ADC channel. And let's see if that helps smooth things out a little bit. Now that we have inserted something between the ACS 756 and the Arduino, we now have uh, a little lower uh, neutral voltage drop. So at zero amps, we're reading now 383 to 384 right in there. Let's see what happens when we provide a one amp load. We're getting 390, 389, fairly stable, a little bit, little bit of noise, but around 388, 389. Pretty good. Let's ramp that up and, and uh, to 10 amps and see what we get. And at 10 amps, we're getting 465, 462, a little bit of noise, not too bad. Well, the output doesn't seem to be quite as linear with this peak detector inserted. However, it is much cleaner. Um, we're only getting about 40 millivolts peak to peak in the noise there. And some of that is probably just due to the uh, leads and such. So the peak detector is working. Mm, this circuit has just gotten a lot more complicated because I need to build that peak detector for two current circuits and a voltage circuit. 
So now I have three pairs of op amps along with everything else. Well, we have a microcontroller here. Maybe we can do something uh, to simplify this whole thing instead of adding a bunch of analog circuits in the midst of it. Um, so let's try oversampling and see if we can then uh, take maybe an average or a peak of the sample. In this case, we'll just put in a uh, simple peak detector and software. We'll oversample. In this case, I've got it set for, I've just programmed it for 10,000 samples per reading. So let's see how that works. We're currently hovering and with zero amps at 476 or thereabouts. Let's turn it on at one amp AC RMS. Getting a reading of 506, now 507. So right in 506 or 507, not too bad. Let's try 10 amps. All right, we're at about 10 amps and now the reading is 588. Let's see if this uh, 587, 586, so hovering around 586, we'll call it. Let's see if it, uh, what it drops down to when we turn off the current, though. Back to 474, 475, that range for the uh, quiescent output. Great. In measuring AC voltage uh, with the AC oversampling peak detector, uh, based in software, we took 10,000 samples per reading, and we're only showing the max value from each sample set. From that test, we had a zero amp reading of 476. That was our count off uh, the neutral voltage coming out of the ACS 756. Uh, we had a one amp input. We had a difference of 30 steps working out to 0.147 volts. And at 10 amps, we had a difference of 0.549 volts. So how does that work out? Well, at one amp input, we had our 0.147 volts times the uh, power factor of 0.707 to get the RMS voltage. That gave us 0.104 with what should be 40 millivolts per amp. We're reading 2.6 amps. Um, nowhere near where we should be. Uh, well, even with uh, some noise, even if the noise was 40 millivolts, that's still way out there. So more work needs to be done to figure that out. Um, probably a wider range of samples will figure that out. Uh, the input at 10 amps uh, came out to a 9.7 amp measurement, which is a 3% error, which I think is well within, well within reason in the test. So, and that certainly meets my goal. Uh, uh, so the oversampling approach for AC current measurement using the ACS 756 from Allegro uh, would work at 10 amps. I've got to figure that out though. At some point, if I take this approach, I'll have to figure out what's going on at the low end. I know this device is not as linear as they say, but that's, that's a pretty big difference. So, on the ACS 756, what's the verdict? Well, I think it'll do the job, but I'm going to have to fit two of these in, and I still have to measure uh, my AC voltage. So I guess I better work on uh, an isolated AC voltage measurement approach next. That's all for this one.